So ever since Windows Defender came out, there's always been a question about how is it different from other existing antivirus solutions, and if there's any reason whatsoever to use a different one since it's built into Windows. Now, I'm going to explore this question in various ways, and we're going to start off talking about behavioral protection. So when it comes to malware that's already in the wild, the most products have signatures for, Microsoft is likely to pick up on that. So you might see an alert for a new detection. One of the things I've noticed, though, through extensive testing is that Microsoft Defender does rely quite a bit on cloud protection. And while that's great for known malware, it means that behaviors that are malicious or new code is not necessarily always detected. So for example, here we have a very simple program that I wrote myself. Interesting timing on the scan alert there. But this file is just going to do a couple of things. It's going to try to delete all of our shadow copies, our recovery options, and grant access to all of our files to itself so it could potentially encrypt them. This is the kind of behavior that ransomware would perform, but this is not a known ransomware. It's just a behavioral test. And if we run this on the system with Windows Defender, there are absolutely no alerts, no detections. It just runs. Now, if we try the exact same test with Kaspersky installed, another well-known security program, we get an alert and it's blocked, even though this is not a known malware. Now, due to recent laws, people in the US can't use Kaspersky. So we'll do the test on another popular vendor, Bitdefender. And again, the moment we try to copy the file, it's actually blocked and disinfected. Now, that's not to say I'm saying that Windows Defender does not offer any protection. In fact, it's very good compared to Windows of old. If you think about the Windows XP days where you open your computer and if you don't install an antivirus, it's the end of the world. It is no longer like that. Windows Defender is very effective at blocking most malware that you'll see. And that is why there's a conversation to be had about other features. So for example, a lot of products like Kaspersky Premium will come with identity protection protection features, ability to protect your personal data, check if you've been exposed on the dark web, monitoring your Wi-Fi, your privacy with features like VPNs. Now, there are various reasons you might want a VPN. Let's say you travel a lot, you want to be able to connect to your home country, or you might want to make sure that nobody's spying on you on the network. Of course, not everyone needs these features, but they are good to have for a lot of us. Some interesting new things coming up like violation control, so they can detect things like legitimate tools like PS exec or some remote control application that a scammer or hacker may use that's not necessarily malware so Windows Defender wouldn't be able to detect it but this could potentially warn you about it. Things that are designed to grab your IP, send some data to the attackers. Again, things that are very difficult to detect as plain malware. You've also got continuous monitoring of things to see if there's some kind of remote access going on. Vulnerability management features like app updaters that are just good for convenience so they can update all your applications without you doing it manually. And you've also got things like firewall and intrusion prevention. Again, Windows does have a firewall, but it doesn't really give you this level of control control, different levels of restrictions for applications, and a third-party product like Kaspersky can give you a lot more control. Now let's go back and look at something like Bitdefender. So we have, again, some built-in features for crypto mining protection. That's kind of like a narrow version of the violation control we saw. So there might be legitimate applications like XMRig that an attacker could install on your system and use to mine crypto. Not technically malware, but some security programs can alert you for things like that. You've also got vulnerability management, ransomware remediation and backup features. Again, the ability to roll back if some of your files get encrypted in Windows, you would have to do that yourself with OneDrive. It's not going to be the same as like automatic rollback when your files get encrypted. Only your OneDrive files would be safe. Kaspersky also has something called System Watcher that does the same thing. And I'm talking about Bitdefender and Kaspersky because they're some of the leading security products. You also have things like Annie Tracker, password management features, both Kaspersky and Bitdefender have this. So you get a slightly enhanced web browsing experience and also better web blocking capabilities. So I hope that gives you a broad idea of how security products in 2025 compare to Windows Defender and if it makes sense for you to get one. For me, um, the question has been always about two things, personal preference and risk management. So obviously, 
if I don't use a computer very much, let's say it's a tablet, I can totally understand it not being worth the hassle. But at the same time, Windows Defender itself can be a bit of a hassle sometimes. So if you ever have to deal with the UI, it's not necessarily very convenient, especially if you have threat detections. And it's not very easy to exclude something if you have false positives. But let's be honest, most people are never going to see this UI anyway. They will use their computer and if something pops up, oh, virus, <laughs> glad it's uh, taken care of. But for more experienced users, I think security products still add a lot of value, especially if you want the fancier tools, you want to be able to monitor things on your system, on your network, and just for the better user experience than what you get with Windows Defender. Also for an average user, a benefit is better protection against scams and phishing and things like that. Info stealers in particular. In some situations, even having slightly better security can be the difference between being hacked or not. So that is something to consider. So it's all about risk management, what your level of tolerance to risk is. It's going to be a different answer for everybody depending on how they use their computer and again what they stand to lose if they do get hacked i personally do use an additional security solution i don't really like windows defender but based on the polls i've done the majority of the people watching the channel do actually just use windows defender I also understand just the amount of headache that comes with getting another product paying for subscriptions renewing it all of that headache some people just do not want also because windows defender is built in i think a lot of people just see it as a reduction in complexity rather than having a third-party solution but something to show you about that is um, it's not entirely true that using Windows Defender means not having any resource utilization or anything like that so for example here you can see you have what we call the anti malware service executable I'm just gonna highlight it here so you've got a couple of services taking up good amount of memory CPU usage from time to time so Windows Defender by no means is free in terms terms of system resource usage. If you install a third party product, it would replace these executables with its own and it would work differently. And that is one good thing that Microsoft has done, thankfully. But that's just in the back end. You do still obviously have to manage the subscription, have an account, all of that. And some people just don't want that, which is understandable. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. I wanted to kind of give everybody an overview of what the landscape is right now from an informed perspective. Of course, I I've done detailed videos doing tests of Windows Defender and popular security software. So you can watch those if you want to get a real in-depth answer in terms of how it compares with detection and things like that. That's what I do here. I test security products. And for those of you who are new to the channel thinking, you sound like my grandpa. Why are you shilling antivirus? Well, as a malware analyst, I used to write signatures and antivirus software was my area of research. And there was a time when this channel was just about comparing different antivirus solutions and their detections. So I know the world's changed a lot since then, and we've come a long way, but I still like to weigh in on this issue when I can, because there are a lot of opinions on it, and many of them are not very well informed. So hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. There's a lot more exciting stuff coming up, and we're actually going to do a guide on what you can do if you get hacked. So make sure you're subscribed for that. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.